Spring is coming, folks. I promise. I said it last year, and it happened. I should have been a weatherman. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is Saturday and I'm working this Saturday because I had to take last Saturday off to do our trip to Montreal. So we're heading out to the shop. Generally speaking, Saturdays are quiet. So we're gonna tear into those heads and get those tore apart. And then that way when our parts come, we can start putting things back together. So I hope you'll join me for this project. And I was thinking we needed some sort of a name for this project, for the J heads. Leave your comments down below and tell me what you think we should call this particular project. So I'm going to stop by Tim Hortons and pick up my order from the Tim Hortons app. Get it, it's very advantageous. I encourage you to do so. This is not a sponsored video, but it could be. We'll see you at the shop. So guys, we are back here at the shop and today we are going to be working on tearing my heads apart. As you can see, I've got one of them on the bench already. I started cleaning off the valves just so I could write on them which cylinder that they came out of and I noticed that there was this little bit of a film on there and as I wiped it down it's almost like a soapy feeling so in my mind I'm thinking that maybe somebody had sea foamed this engine uh, before they parked it and before they tore it apart because that's kind of what it feels like it's almost like a soapy feel. So I'm going to grab some brake cleaner we're going to uh, take this apart and I'm working on it here at the shop. Uh, while I'm at work today, Saturdays are pretty quiet and this way I can keep an eye on the parking lot through the camera system. I'm going to set you guys up so we can get these things uh, wiped down and we'll start numbering them and we'll go to town. So you can see how easy that comes off. And when we get these valves out, we'll be able to tell whether they've got hardened seats in them or if they're just the original made for uh, leaded gas. And whatever that stuff is that's in there, it really does kind of wipe off nice and easy. So I've got my blue Sharpie and we are going to call this cylinder number one. And from here on out, we are going to use my dad's MacGyvered giant C-clamp for taking valves apart. So, so I'm gonna stick this thing on some high speed and enjoy the music. That certainly was a little more painful than it had to be, but sometimes it helps if you have the right tool. Once I did the first couple, uh, I realized that the gap between here and here was way too small for this size valve. So I took a hammer and I just kind of pried it open. And once I got that spread apart, things started going a lot more smooth. Then I had to turn it over and do the other side. And well, I just started running into the same old complication little bit of a balance issue on the edge of the bench here but nevertheless we've got the valves out there's the first four and there's the second set and we, all we got to do now is tear the other side apart and get the seals and stuff out of this one and we'll be ready to start uh, gasket matching these heads so that we can get a little better flow uh, out of this system so that is what we are going to do. We're going to switch over to the other set of heads, get those ones stripped apart, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Well, there you have it, guys. A couple of Mopar J heads, all stripped down and ready to roll. And one thing I did notice on a couple of these valves, this one here, looks like it's been beat up pretty good. Maybe sitting in water, the bottom side is all pitted up. And then there's a couple more over here. That one looks like it's got water on it. It's 
Not too bad on the bottom side. That one's not too bad, I guess. But uh, this one here was the worst one. So I think I may take a look at the cost of valves and see what's going to be entailed there. My guess is, is that they're not terribly expensive, but I want this thing to work good and I only really want to do it once. So uh, all the valve seats actually look good. So if you look at the exhaust valve here on uh, the one that I have labeled number eight, that's the one that this has come out of. It's got a little bit of rust in there, but I think it should be, uh, we should be able to clean it up. There's no pitting. Uh, the rest of the uh, valves, the valve seats look good. But then again, I am no expert on machined heads or ported heads or any of that sort of stuff. So I'll get uh, a little bit more of an expert opinion from, uh, from Deb when he comes in on Monday. See what he thinks on that, and we'll decide at that point whether we're gonna send the heads out and, uh, and have them done, or whether we're just gonna go with the flow and see, uh, see what we can make based on what we've already got. So yes, I do need a few valves. Uh, we're gonna take a look at those on the weekend and see what uh, kind of pricing there is and get those ordered and on the way. The other thing that we're going to be doing in the very near future is we're going to be tearing apart the motor uh, the, right down to the heads in the car. So what we're going to be doing there is we're going to be working away at pulling the carburetor, the intake, uh, and the heads off and making way for these heads to go back on. But in the meantime, like I said before, we are going to be gasket matching the heads uh, and the intake. And basically what that means is these holes here that are the runners for the intake um, aren't necessarily machined 100%. These are just basically the way they come cast and there's a few rough edges here and there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the old gaskets off the car, lay them out on here and uh, with a Sharpie, uh, we are going to run them out to see how much bigger the gasket hole is compared to these holes here. And then we'll just kind of clean the edges out to match the gaskets. From what I understand, that is supposed to make uh, the air flow a lot better through the intake and into the heads, therefore creating a little more power. At least that's what we're hoping. These heads, even in stock form, are gonna flow so much better than the stock um, 350, or sorry, 318, 360 heads that are on the car right now. So guys, I know this was a little bit of a short video, uh, just kind of tearing these heads apart, but I wanted to get it done and I wanted to get it on camera as well. So I hope you really enjoyed me kind of tearing those apart, struggling with a makeshift MacGyver tool that dad built. Um, when, when we really should have is the proper tool that's got a little bit more leverage than a pair of ice grip handle uh, on it. So uh, nevertheless, we got them done. Maybe I will look at the proper tool for reinstalling and uh, maybe we'll have that ready when we go to put these heads back together. There are four links in the description box down below. I would really appreciate if you guys take the time to go down and check those out. Link number one is bonfire.com. That is where I have my very own Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts. If you want to support the channel by showing off your merch, my merch, with your friends, then go to bonfire.com in the first link in the description box below and get your very own t-shirt or hoodie. The second link in the description box below is to Straight Six Fan. And Straight Six Fan and I co-host a show on YouTube on Thursday nights that we call the Car Guy and Six Fan YouTuber Hangout. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to get all the automotive guys on YouTube that we know who are smaller channels and we're trying to help them grow. At the same time, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. We're hoping to be there within the next week or two. So I hope that you guys can join along with us. If you're not subscribed to Straight Six Fan, I will put a link right here in the cards as well. So you can have quick access to go over to his channel, hit that subscribe button. That way, when the show is hosted on his channel, you'll get notified when it's hosted on mine. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified when we go live there as well. The third link in the description box below is my affiliate link to TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a program that is an add-on to either your Google Chrome or your Microsoft Edge that allows you to better perform with your videos. So it helps you with tagging your videos, thumbnails, better descriptions, and a big checklist of things that you can do to help make that video just stand out a little bit more. So I encourage you. There is a free version, virgin? No, there's a free version that you can go down and 
try that out. And if you want to go the paid, uh, the paid version, it gives you a few extra bonuses. So I encourage you to check it out and uh, by clicking the link below. The fourth link is my Patreon. If you want to be a patron of Old Car Auto Guy, what that does is that allows me to do more with the channel. It provides a little bit of extra funding so that I can go out and buy more project vehicles like Project Bubbles and have some fun with these vehicles. We can put them through their paces, take them where they're not supposed to go, pin the engines out, whatever we want to do, and maybe at the end we do something spectacular like, I don't know, maybe battery dies. Who knows? Anyways, you get what I'm saying? Guys, I thank you so much for helping me get to where I am in this channel. I work very hard to provide these videos for you guys, and I know that you really appreciate them. Keep giving that thumbs up. Keep commenting in the comment section down below. I appreciate all the love, guys. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video. Summertime.